Okay, here we are. I'm talking about the German rotary valve trumpet, or what they call a German trumpet. It's actually not German at all, as I was explaining before. But uh, Germans like to identify with it as their trumpet. Basically, it's a natural trumpet that had valves added to it, whereas a piston valve trumpet is a cornet that got stretched. And uh, another system with valves. You see, the, the lead pipe is much longer here. Therefore, the trumpet mouthpiece of a piston valve trumpet, because the instrument's more conical, has to be flatter cup. Whereas here, it's almost cylindrical as soon as it comes out of the mouthpiece, starting from here, otherwise you can't make it into the valves. And therefore, you need a cup of the mouthpiece that's more funnel cup. This is not understood, and I had to, actually, when I sat across in the German brass from the solo trumpet in Berlin Philharmonic, uh, the, the solo trumpeter for none other than Herbert von Karajan, I had to talk about mouthpiece, and I said, hey, Connie, Conrad Ingrode, hey, Connie, what kind of mouthpiece are you playing there, man? He said, uh, oh, it's a Bach mouthpiece. I said, what do you mean Bach? Vincent Bach mouthpiece from New York. I said, yeah, that's a very good mouthpiece, but uh, doesn't it Bach? Doesn't it, uh, ba you know, doesn't ba doesn't it back up somehow with the airflow? And he said, yeah, that's why I bored it out. So what he'd done is bored out an American mouthpiece to fit a German trumpet and then destroyed the backbore of the mouthpiece and had to force his embouchure very much more than necessary. And that's why he doesn't play anymore. If you don't know what you're doing, it's very dangerous. And if you're not taught properly in universities and whatever, or at the Von Karajan Stiftung by, I think his teacher was Mr. Schneiderwind, um, uh, then it's very difficult for you to understand what's necessary to do. Since then, there's been quite a renaissance. And you asked me before, Bobby, what about mouthpieces? Well, the reason that I make mouthpieces is to make proper mouthpieces for the instrument because the tradition is for, was lost. Not only the tradition, tradition of the, of the so-called so Bach trumpet or trumpet to catcher, but also the tradition uh, just generally. You have to understand how many really great Germans died unnecessarily in two world wars. Great people with a great deal of dignity and a great deal of strength. They were just, what's the word, verführt? Seduced. They were seduced by a madman and drugged with pervertine, if you know what crystal meth is. But anyway, uh, the first movement of the Hindemith Sonata written in 1939 is, the, is really the sonata that won me the uh, German radio and television solo trumpet competition in 1980. Because you have to play it with balls. This is not a girl's piece. It's not a girl's piece. You have to understand that I'm not trying to be political correct for one second. This is a piece that means, you, unless you're a Valkyrie, unless you're, you're so you know, some sort of a woman riding a horse, what are they called? The Valkyrie, weren't they? Weren't they? Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Amazons, they called them too, you know? They came out of the steppe. These were, this was a woman's cult, you know, where they fought like, uh, like uh, crazy. Okay, maybe then. But generally, in this society, at this time in life, this is a man's piece. Because it says at the beginning, mit Kraft. And Kraft comes through, uh, among other things, testosterone. But not necessarily. It comes also with mentality. It comes with determination. So the first movement really depicts the strength of Germany. Kruppstahl. Sei wie leder. Hart wie Kruppstahl. Kruppstahl. Krupp was, uh, um, Gustav Krupp was the maker of uh, development of steel, first of all for the railroad and then later for armaments in the 19th century for railroads. And the first movement is extremely powerful. The second movement is called Mesig Bewegt. And the zweite Teil, Lebhaft. Mesig Bewegt means, okay, norm, just, you know, a, a normal kind of movement. And Lebhaft means a little bit more excited movement. It's just about the movement of the, but it's really a lugubre second, second uh, movement that's really, is like little toy trumpets and how you, how you abuse and use children and, and the Hitler you can to, to, to take people and to train them into being soldiers so that they'll follow you into their death, like, like the Volkssturm that happened at the end of the Second World War when children and, and old men were trying to defend Berlin against Russians that were coming in with uh, T-32 panzers and just blowing the hell out of Berlin when they had no defenses except what they call the German call a Panzerfaust. And then the, then the last movement is called trauer music. Very, very slow. Can we just play the beginning of the trauer music? Okay, Dan, play it like there's no tomorrow, right? Like trauer music. Go ahead. Loud. Oh, excuse me, it's piano.
You're playing the wrong chord, man. Look at the chord. Okay, maybe it's just the disposition. I tuned the piano, maybe it's, I just tuned it purely. Can you just play the chord for me, fortissimo? That's it, that's it. That's it, that's really dramaticism. Let's go right there. 55, uh, 5-4 bar. Going, can you show the ventilator? Can you show the ventilator? The ventilator causes a vibration that sounds like I have Parkinson's or something like that, so I have to turn the ventilator off so that we don't have that problem. Great, sounding great, uh, Dan. Thank you so much. Um, now, this, the second part is Ruig bewegt. Um, you can see the rotary valve trumpet has valves that move very, very... Uh, there's a lot of spaghetti here, a lot of uh, extensions here that are really problematic, which makes it... It makes the movement very quick here, but it's very... The Germans call it anfällig. Is the word for anfällig is? Uh, Empfindlich. Um, no, more like uh, it's uh, it, it can screw up very easily. Prone to? Yeah, prone to uh, dysfunction. But because it's uh, because it's very small mechanism, you have a very quick turn here, and so it actually you can play very fast with this instrument. But it's very economical in this movement. Um, technically, more advanced than a piston valve, but a piston valve trumpet resonates better because in the valve there's a piece of metal so that it resonates always on the metal through the instrument. But it's a technical aspect. In any event, this instrument has double triggers. This is uh, the very first prototype that I built for California back in the late 90s. Um, and uh, there's a, an, a bell made in the United States. This is silver plated, gold plated inside. It's got these what they what the Germans call these little uh, uh, over um, in, uh, actually they're just overtone resonance holes that I don't use anyway because it just takes away from the sound of the instrument. 